Hello everybody, my name is Jody Grant and welcome to the Inks here. Today I'm going to be showcasing one of my favorite systems on the nested oblong kit from Wild Gears and uh, hopefully give a clear explanation of uh, some fun things to do with this. So right now I have the, um, the large oblong cut, pretty center, I just eyed it, I just did it by eye. Um, with the 210 160 ring, which you can find in the plentiful and full page hoop set from Wild Gears. And I have the 8040 gear with a 20 inside of it, so it's a 2 to 1 ratio, that's 160 to 80, and then another 2 to 1 ratio, that's 40 to 20. And it gives us this sort of a lemon shape. There we go. So I have this set up where everything's just at 12 o'clock here. So from here also, excuse me, my hands are all colored and stuff. I was doing live liquid lights last night, which is, you have like a projector, you put water and oil in a bowl and it projects these trippy lights. It's really old school. Anyways, so back to this art form though. Um, one of my favorite things to do with this shape is I just, I like to displace the top rack one to the right, one to the left, either direction. Um, I typically try to, I typically start going left to right for some reason um, before I end up going this way. Um, so you'll displace this one tooth and then there's a whole combination of things I'll do from here. Um, I might go one forward and one back I might uh, go two forward and one back. I might go one forward and one forward. I might go one back and two forward. This is what I call repetition or repetitions um, is what what motion you're repeating after each. Uh, movement so so we've to pl this place this one to the right and we're gonna start with something simple um, on this and we're just gonna leave our primary gear here station or at its same starting point and we're gonna move this one the inner one the 20 one back one counterclockwise within the 40 cut here cool. I always love seeing that first displacement of seeing how it how it's displaced because each time it's different and I, I, I love it. I love it. And so that's it. We chose a repetition and now it's kind of the game I play to just stick to that repetition the best I can. and repeat it until I either don't have any more space or until it feels right to me. So we move along the top rack, one to the right. We move our 20 gear, one counterclockwise. Move it one to the right, one counterclockwise on the 20 gear. I'm using this uh, Sharpie pen. I've been trying out different pens recently, regardless of reputation. And um, so I picked out, so I'd have no problems during the video, one I hadn't used yet. So this is a fresh orange one. I think orange is a good color for the video too, it pops out. 
And so far it's flowing pretty good, I like it. Um, I don't know what's different about these fine tip sharpies, um, but they seem to work a little better than the the usual fine tip sharpies. Uh, those ones I find bleed a bit more and feather on the paper a bit more. These ones haven't been feathering as much. And uh, the starting points don't bleed too much. That's that's always a good thing to look out for. So. We're like a quarter. We're at like 9 o'clock now within the 40 cut. So we're about a quarter through this design and we're starting to see how it's taking shape and how it'll continue to take shape. We kind of have an idea of the motion at this point. And again, we're just keeping this 80 gear at the same starting point at 12 o'clock. You see that? This is still just at 12 o'clock. Like I said, I'll do this until it feels right to me, until I can't go anymore. It's really up to the artist where we stop and end. On the subject of uh, starting points, you see, you can you can clearly see where I started. And I'm not trying to be too careful here, so uh, hold up. I've moved this a little bit. Let me get back where I was. Yeah, okay, that's where I was. Um, so yeah, on the topic of uh, starting points, if you want to avoid those. One of my favorite things to do to do that is to start more at the intersections here where there's already a line. And then just be very careful when you come back up on it. And it kind of hides it a little better. Maybe, maybe not. It's just not out in the open anymore at that point, so. And at this point, I tend to move over here. I always like starting with my pen hole as close as I can to up, because that's what's comfortable for me. So as I move down, I tend to move my uh, starting point to the other side so that I can start at the point, at the most pointed spot, as close to the top as possible. Um, you don't have to do this, but um, just explaining why I'm moving around. Because it doesn't really matter where you start within here. It'll always uh, end up going around the same path. So you just need to make sure you keep this repetition the same, that we're still moving counterclockwise right here. We're still just moving. We're being introduced very gradually. Oops. No biggie. That might be the hardest part about this art is hardest part about this art is just uh, getting back on track. If you've ever, if you ever get off, so um, sometimes I like to start with this gear to the left, or just the opposite 
direction of the side I'm moving it to because it's easier to just move the gear that way. The gear will touch, will uh, move it itself. So I'm actually back at uh, 12 o'clock here. In reality, because I switched sides, I'm actually back at 6 o'clock down here is what is what's happening so but I moved back up to the top for comfort's sake and I'm just gonna keep going All right, that's pretty much as far as we can go on that side. Um, I think I could go like one more tooth or something, but I'm back at 12 o'clock at all fronts here, and that seems like a good place to stop because I'm at that full lemon shape again. I'm sure you guys noticed how the lemon shape like contracted and and uh, <laughs> the opposite of contract. <laughs> Sorry, I'm still just getting up. So, uh, since we didn't move the bottom rack at all, we can just roll this back to zero, and it should be lined up and everything. And we'll throw our 80 gear back in here, our 80, 40 gear back in here, and then we'll throw our 20 back in at 12 o'clock again. So from here, we have um, two choices. We could make this symmetrical mirror it this way and to do that we would still move along the top rack and then instead of moving counterclockwise since we're going left now we would go clockwise and we would repeat that all the way over uh, we could also though make this rotationally symmetric so that if you turned it around it would still look the same and I tend to like doing that on this kit a lot so we're gonna do that um, so what we're gonna do is last time we moved our top rack to the right from left to right so now we're gonna act as though we turned this over and we can just turn this over but I like playing the brain game of figuring this out we're gonna um, act as though this is turned over and move our bottom rack from right to left now because that would be the same motion and we'll move this down here and we will mirror I guess mirror that same motion of this going counterclockwise if it was turned the other way Now, I still try to always start with my starting point as close to the north, you could say, as possible, to 12 o'clock. So I, I still just start up here. But I keep track of that, of that motion. See, I'm, I'm actually technically still just going counterclockwise. But that makes the, the, it makes it happen down there. So we will begin and we're going to repeat this as far as we did on this one so that it's symmetrical if you want to make this symmetrical you actually don't have to make this symmetrical or follow any of the directions I'm saying there are no rules to this art or to any art, really. The only rules are the rules that govern, I guess, the physics of this. I guess the only rules are mathematics here. I haven't read the complete rule book on that yet. So moving the bottom rack it's always a bit easier 
because you don't have to grip this and move this as much. If you notice, this pretty much stays in the same place because the top rack now isn't moving too much. So I always find going this way a lot easier. So we're moving our bottom rack one from right to left, one tooth each time. And we're still one tooth this time. And we're still just um moving our twenty gear one counterclockwise while keeping it stationary at the maintaining its starting point of twelve o'clock. Had to pause for a moment. And so we will continue. Also, I had misplaced a line. You might see it right there. It happens. It happens. You just gotta go back and find find your place. Oh. Mixed up the repetition somewhere, but probably when I switched over here. But we're just going to keep with it, because it's not that big an issue. It'll add some uh, flavor. See, look at that flavor. Look at that flavor. Spicy. And there we have it. We have uh, completed this lemon shape again. I am back at 12 o'clock within all my rotations. Now we just have to look at it and be like, wow, that's really neat. I just got a text message. So, I hope this has been insightful and has given you some ideas on uh, where to go and what to do with this kit. Um, again, there is a whole combination of options to do with this system um, where you move it along the top rack or the bottom rack and you can make it symmetrical this way make it symmetrical rotationally um, and you can do this time we just did a counterclockwise repetition but you could um, move it clockwise while still maintaining and that would completely change the form of this at the end um, again you can go forward one and back one you could go uh, back one and forward one. Both of those would affect it in a very specific way. And you can go forward two, back one. You could go back two, forward one. You could go forward one, forward one. You could go back one, back one. You could maintain the position of the inside one and just move the primary and that actually would just keep the lemon shape it wouldn't affect the lemon shape at all it would uh, maintain that lemon shape the whole time if you're really into that lemon shape um, it's really all up to you artist and again it's important to keep symmetry in mind with these um, I did a rotational symmetry here where if you flipped it uh, 180 degrees it would be uh, the same and you can also do the mirrored symmetry so it's just important to uh you know decide what you want to do and stick to that 
I hope you've enjoyed this Wild Gears Nested Oblong tutorial. I'll be uh, releasing a few more recipes uh, this coming week. And you can find the what the Wild Gears Nested Oblong gear set and all of Aaron's gear sets up at the Wild Gears website, wildgears.com. I'll leave the link below for you all, uh, both to the website and this kit. Quick shout out to my patrons over at Patreon who uh, help me and allow me to make these videos and spend all the time that I do exploring Wild Gears. You all are truly a blessing. Um, make sure to uh, like and subscribe and uh, check out my Patreon. I'll leave a link down in the description as well. Lots of love and happy spinning!